Today, I'm going to explain how DeFi lending and borrowing works. The first thing you need to know is what DeFi is. DeFi is short for Decentralized Finance. It's a new way of doing financial transactions that don't require a bank or other traditional financial institutions. Instead, DeFi transactions are done on the blockchain, which is a decentralized network of computers that anyone can access and use. So how do DeFi lending and borrowing work? Basically, you can think of it like this. There are people who have money that they're willing to lend out, and there are people who need money and are willing to borrow it. The lending and borrowing are done through smart contracts, which are like digital agreements that are stored on the blockchain. The contracts specify the terms of the loan, such as how much money is being lent, the interest rate, and when the loan needs to be repaid. Once the contract is created, it cannot be changed, so both the borrower and lender know exactly what they're agreeing to. To find someone to lend or borrow from, you can use a DeFi lending platform. These platforms match borrowers and lenders and help facilitate the loan process. Some popular DeFi lending platforms include AAVE, MakerDAO, Compound, and Dharma. If you're thinking about taking out a loan, be sure to do your research and compare different lending platforms to find the best terms for you. There are some important DeFi terms that you need to understand. The first concept to understand is LTV. LTV is short for Loan to Value Ratio. The loan is the principal, while the value is the collateral that the borrower is putting up for the loan. For example, if you're borrowing $100 and you put up $200 worth of Ethereum as collateral, then your LTV would be about 50%. If the price of Ethereum goes down and your collateral is worth less than what you borrowed, then your loan will be under collateralized. This means that you'll owe money to the lender and they might ask for more collateral or even liquidate your position, which means they sell your Ethereum to repay the loan. So it's important to always keep an eye on the value of your collateral and make sure that your loan is sufficiently collateralized. LTV is also a way to measure how much risk a lender is taking on by loaning your money. The higher the LTV, the more risk the lender is taking on and the higher the interest rate will be. For example, if you're borrowing $100 and the LTV is 50%, that means the lender is only loaning you $50. So if you don't repay the loan, the lender isn't out very much money. On the other hand, if you're borrowing $100 and the LTV is 90%, that means the lender is loaning you $90. If you don't repay the loan, the lender stands to lose out on a lot of money. As a borrower, you want to find a loan with a low LTV so that you can get a lower interest rate. Lenders want to find loans with high LTVs so they can charge higher interest rates and make more money. High LTV ratios also put the borrower at risk of liquidations. So just because a loan has a high LTV doesn't mean it's a good deal for the borrower. Remember that cryptocurrencies can be volatile and if you don't have enough collateral you could end up owing money to the lender. Now you might be thinking, why would I take a loan out with a high LTV when there's a risk of liquidation? The answer is leverage. With a high LTV loan, you're able to borrow more money than you could with a low LTV loan. This can be helpful if you're trying to make a big purchase or invest in something. However, it's important to remember that with leverage comes risk. So only use leverage if you're comfortable with the risk involved. The next concept to understand is APR. APR stands for Annual Percentage Rate. It's the interest rate that you'll pay on a loan over a year. For example, if you're taking out a loan for $100 with an APR of 5%, that means you'll owe $5 in interest after one year. The APR is different from the interest rate because the interest rate is the monthly or weekly rate that you'll pay on the loan. The APR is the annual rate, but the APR is usually much higher than the interest rate because it's compounded. This means that the interest you owe is added to the loan balance and you charge interest on the new higher balance. So the APR can be a very high number and it's important to take this into account when you're taking out a loan. You might also be wondering why someone wouldn't just sell their crypto to get the funds that they need. The answer is that not everyone wants to sell their crypto. Some people want to hold on to their crypto in hopes that the price will go up in the future. Simply put, they might want to use their crypto as a collateral for a loan so that they can get the cash they need without having to sell their crypto. Selling also results in a taxable event while debt does not. 
Whatever the reason, not everyone wants to sell their crypto and that's where loans come in. Loans give people the ability to get the cash they need without having to sell their crypto. Lenders receive passive income for the risk they're taking by loaning money to borrowers. They also get to keep the crypto as collateral, so if the borrower doesn't repay the loan, the lender can sell the crypto to recoup their losses. Now that you know how DeFi lending and borrowing works, you can start exploring the different platforms and find the best deal for you. DeFi unlocks traditional financial products for crypto assets and allows anyone with an internet connection to access them. This decentralized nature empowers users and gives them more control over their finances. It also opens up new opportunities for lending and borrowing that didn't exist before. If you're looking for a way to get involved in the DeFi space, lending and borrowing is a great place to start. Just be sure to do your research and understand the risk before you get started. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.